Hello there guys, welcome back to another Epic Inexorable Maths video. In this video we're looking at Feynman's trick once again, this is the second time. And um, this integral is so good that I believe they should add it to Fortnite, okay? I think they should add Richard Feynman to Fortnite, I think they should add this integral to Fortnite. I think that solving this integral may be, dare I say, better than a victory royale, which I've got a few of those, so uh, who knows. But anyway, let's have a look at this integral, okay? If you don't play Fortnite, don't worry about it. Um, it's probably for the better. So, this is an integral we're going to do with Feynman's trick. Now, the question is, why would we use Feynman's trick? First of all, is there an obvious other method? Can we use U substitution? Can we use integration by parts? Can we use partial fractions? Whatever other method that you want. It doesn't really look like it. It doesn't. So... Feynman's trick maybe is creeping in. And even more importantly, this is the clever bit. If we differentiated this thing here with respect to, let's say, the variable a, the, well, technically it's a constant, but if we treat it as a variable right now, if we differentiate with respect to it, then we're going to get an x come down via the chain rule that's going to cancel out with this x. So differentiating with respect to a constant inside of the integral can be really, really beneficial and advantageous because it will cancel out and it will make the integral easier to do. We can then compute that integral, the simpler one, and then integrate. We're about to see how it, how it works now. So I'm going to treat this integral as a function of a, f of a. Then I'm going to differentiate it. So the derivative of f of a is the integral from zero to infinity. And before I actually differentiate it, let's just write down exactly what we're doing. We're gonna take the partial derivative with respect to a of the inside, okay? And again, I'm gonna do what I did last time. I'm gonna split this into two fractions to make it easier. So this is e to the minus ax over x minus e to the minus bx over x dx, and we're saying a and b are greater than zero, okay? Then we can actually integrate it. So this is the integral from zero to infinity. And notice that this term here doesn't even have an a in it, so it's gonna just differentiate to zero. And what's gonna to happen to this term? Well, if we differentiate, again, with respect to a, we do not need the quotient rule or anything like that because it's with respect to a. We're just gonna get minus x e to the minus ax still over x. So we're going to get minus x e to the minus a x over x dx like that. Just about have room here to squeeze it in. Cancel the x's out, boom, boom. And we just have minus e to the minus a x dx like that. Okay. Now, as you can see, this is a much, 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 much simpler integral. So let's compute this integral, okay? So the integral from zero to infinity of minus e to the minus ax, okay? First of all, I will, I will go there. Let's, do, let's you know, do it with limit notation because this is an improper integral. The limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from zero to t of minus e to the minus ax dx, okay? And that's gonna be the limit as t approaches infinity of, if we integrate e to the minus ax, we're going to get minus 1 over a times e to the minus ax, and there's already a minus there. So it's 1 over a e to the minus ax from 0 to t. Okay, have a look at that. Make sure that you're really, really happy with that. Because we're going with respect to x now, so not a, so that is how it works. And then we're going to evaluate it. So this is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of 1 over a e to the minus uh, a t minus 1 over a times e to the 0. So we have this. And as t approaches infinity, remember a is a positive number, as, e, as t approaches infinity, that first term there, 1 over a e to the minus at, is going to approach 0. So we're going to end up getting that the derivative of f 
of a is equal to just minus 1 over a. Cool. Now, we're looking for f of a, not the derivative. So all we have to do is integrate, okay, to get f of a. So that means that f of a, f of a, is the integral of minus 1 over a, which is minus the natural log of a. And again, I'm not doing absolute value, I'm not doing modulus, because we've already said that a is a positive number. And of course, we need a plus c. Now, how would we find what c is? So if we go back to the original integral, we need to find a way, an initial condition. We need to know the value of this integral when a is a particular number so that we can find c. Well, huh, what could we do? What do we know? What, what could we choose? Well, it's not very obvious when a is like 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or anything like that. a is a positive number. We can't choose a negative number. Do you see that if a was equal to b, then we'd have e to the minus bx minus e to the minus bx over x. That's zero. Just like in the last video, we made the integral be zero. So f of b is zero for whatever b is. Okay? So that means that I can say f of b is zero. And f of b is minus the natural log of b plus c, okay? So that means that c, c is equal to the natural log of b. Okay, cool. I appreciate it's a little bit weird because it's like, what, you replaced a with b? Because we're treating a as a variable kind of and b is the constant. For the record, we technically could have done this with the b as well, but you just choose one. Cool. So that means that f of a, f of a is equal to uh, just that. So minus the natural log of a plus c. So minus the natural log of a plus c, which is the natural log of b. And that leads us to this really nice answer because obviously minus the natural log of a plus the natural log of b, that's equal to the natural log of b over a. So that's a really nice answer. So we worked out that this is equal to the natural log of b over a. And again, that's when a and b are both positive numbers. Okay, And that's it. So there's another application of Feynman's trick, differentiating inside of the integral to then evaluate a simpler integral and then integrate that. Really, really cool. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I highly appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.